Hello to our viewers at home. I'm Joyce from the museum's social media team, and I'm so excited for day two of our virtual Bouquets to Art Week. For the next few days, we'll have a Bouquets to Art focused discussion with special guests. You can see the schedule on our website at deyoungmuseum.org slash bouquets. For our longtime followers, today's guests might be a familiar face, and for those tuning in for the first time, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Trisha O'Regan, Paintings Conservator. Trisha, thank you for joining us. We're so excited to get a behind the scenes view of what conservation does during Bouquets to Art. Hi Joyce, and thank you so much for inviting me back to talk about keeping art safe during Bouquets to Art. Uh, the event is so popular and really activates the galleries, but it does pose some risks to the collections, as you know. And um, we've worked since 1984 when um, BTA began to ensure a smooth and safe week for the art and have worked hard to keep our insect friends from attending the event. We've also developed ways to protect artworks um, from incurring physical damage during the installation and the very busy week with big crowds in the galleries. Um, we actually start working on the BTA project about seven months in advance of the event with the team and we choose appropriate spots for the displays and then in subsequent months we work with the floral designers as they call and seek approval for new and odd materials that they want to use. Interesting. So how do you communicate these potential problems to the designers? Well, here is an example of our um, our Bible, which is our two-page master list of rules, which have been honed and updated each year by Deborah Evans, our recently retired head of paper conservation. She was a conservator um, in charge of this event for over the last 20 years, and she really established the rules for keeping art safe during BTA. Um, she loves bouquets to art and is a really talented gardener herself. Interesting. Shout out to Debbie. Hi, Debbie. I know you're watching. <laughs> So can you walk us through what you and our team of conservators do on installation day at Bouquet Start? Sure, sure. So it starts early at 7.45 in the morning on installation day, our, our conservation team kind of turns into a little police force. Um, and we wear these badges and our lab coats to sort of reinforce our authority. And then it makes us really easy to find in the galleries and uh, all over the museum that day because um, it can be stressful for the designers and, and for us. And there's a lot going on. So um, it's a little humor and we, we try to look very official. <laughs> oh, and we wear running shoes. Um, that's really important. I always remind the team of that. Um, we usually, you know, we, you can log with your phone how much you, run that day and over 10 miles easily is, is done by each of us. Um, an important th part of our program on installation day is the inspection of materials at a single point as they come in. And the exhibitors are usually lined up before 8 a.m. Um, in the garage and they install until about one. And then they have to leave the galleries and we usher them out if they're, if they're still working on their pieces. And, and that allows the technicians to come in and light their displays for the big gala on Monday night. Right. So what do you worry about the most with flowers coming in? Well, you would think with the massive amounts of flowers that come in um, that they would be the main culprits in bringing in insects. But early on, we had our guidelines reviewed by a museum pest expert. And um, he was not so concerned about the flowers, but he was adamant about possible wood beetle infestation or um, some wood boring insects from um, wooden support materials that were used by the florists. Um, wood has always been the top of our prohibited list and has taken years of educating the designers about the hazards of bringing in untreated wood and um, many times we've had to turn down, you know, turn away lovely pedestals and or a frame to be consistent with this rule. Um, if you really, if they really want to use a wooden item in their display, we can talk to them in advance and they can get it professionally fumigated prior to the event and present us with that proof. And um, feathers, which are also an attractive food source for uh, insects, all have frequently shown up, but we can't allow them either because they're too attractive to pests. Is that all? Are there other potential problems? <laughs> 
Well, we worry about closed <laughs> lofts, uh, of course, um, that could come in if anyone used silk or wool in the, in the display. So we've added those to our list of forbidden materials, which is, you know, quite, quite extensive. Um, any fabric that you want to use has to be cotton or synthetic or have been recently dry cleaned. Um, some of the artists will work up to the last minute too. And we, um, started noticing you know the smell of the sort of spray paint and and solvents leaving paint coming off some of the works so we can't really have that in the galleries either and here, here's a picture of debbie and i doing a smell test <laughs> we also confiscate um permit you know florists use all kinds of cans of sprayed adhesive and all sorts of things that i had never known about and just you know water sprayers but we can't have them in the around the art either. So we take them away at the door and they pick them up on the way back. <laughs> wow, very strict. <laughs> um, I've been witnessing BTA come to fruition for years. Everything looks so perfect and put together. Every last detail is buttoned up and executed so beautifully. You would never know that all this chaos happens on Monday morning before the week starts. Controlled chaos. But yeah. That's, I think that's what, um, that's how the sheriff's badge thing sort of began because we felt like we were the, the police, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is happening in the galleries after they pass this inspection point? So once they take off and go to the galleries that they are setting up their piece in, um, the conservation staff um, circulates all morning to help with that. And he here's a picture of uh, conservator Leslie Kruth is helping someone navigate a narrow hallway with his artwork. As you can see, it's a little, a little pointy. Um, there are sometimes as many as eight displays in a, gal in a single gallery. So we've learned the importance of placing stanchions in front of the most vulnerable artwork. And um, another way we provide physical protection is to make sure that the floral installations are far enough away from the art. So in case there was an earthquake or they topple for another reason, it wouldn't hit the object. Um, we, we, so we roam around, we try to identify problems before a display becomes too heavy or too developed. We don't want to ruin anyone's day. Um, and this negotiation here, I remember, was about the volume of water related to the height and stability of the vase. And um, some de designers have started to use like a clear solid plastic when they want to create the illusion of water it, to avoid this. And um, there's usually a way to solve any issue by calling us ahead of time, we can, we can figure things out. Um, so I'm guessing your work isn't done on Monday afternoon. Well, in the mornings, the, the florists come back and um, add water to their displays. And so we actually circulate when they're out uh, in the galleries and we pick up petals and see if anything's leaking and um, also pick out our favorite display and talk about it later. And because um, it's tough to get out there during the day. It's, it's, a very popular event, as you know. Yeah. Um, Debbie said that um, she knew that the conservation team had become an integral part of the event when an exhibitor made a display to poke fun at us um, with fake spilled water and a fake pest. <laughs> That's so funny and brilliant. Finally, on the last day, um, which is takedown on Sunday, the conservators assist in the flurry of, of that and um, I must say, working, looking at these two younger conservators, working with bouquets to art is somewhat of a rite of passage for our team. And um, I want to once more acknowledge the work of Debbie Evans and all the work she did to make BTA safe for the art and handing it off to me at the moment um, in such a good state upon her retirement. I know she'll be back as a volunteer for our next BTA, so you can look for her in the white coat. We can't wait. Mm -hmm. Trisha, that was so interesting. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge about booking awesome. the art with us today. And of course, congratulations for becoming our head conservation sheriff. Thank you. Um, <laughs> a couple questions for you from me. What gallery do you look forward to being activated or what part of the museum do you wish was more activated during bouquets? Ooh, two different questions. Um, the American Impressionist Gallery is very activated during this time, and they always do. Uh, I just 
love the beautiful arrangements they do and that with all those graceful paintings in there. Um, what I, uh, when we were closed and rebuilding the De Young, um, we had BTA at the Legion and it looked so beautiful there. I, I hope that we get to do that again one day. That would be fun. One day. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for your time. What should visitors look forward to when the museums reopen, hopefully sometime soon? The De Young open, absolutely. I can't wait to see what the community and all, all our artists in the community have, um, have entered. And um, I think it's going to be controlled chaos to get it in. No, there, it, it'll be great. And, but we have a lot of practice of doing this. I think we can use a lot of the knowledge that we've gained from BTA when all that artwork comes in. And I think it's gonna be great. And what's your role in the preparation for the De Young Open, which if you're just now learning about it, it to our viewers at home, it is um, an open call to Bay Area artists to have their uh, works submitted and exhibited at the De Young, and they'll be able to retain 100% of the proceeds. Right. They are right. My, my role, I, I did review the guidelines, which, you know, were somewhat based on BTA. Um, our head of conservation, Jane Williams, is sort of was sort of in charge of that. But um, I, I imagine that a lot of the um, works will be paintings, and I think I'll be pulled in to stand by the door, maybe with a white coat on, who knows, and um, just check things and um, just lend a practical hand. It's going to be probably most work for the technician team, but they're they're very good and they can they can do it. <laughs> Well, thank you, Trisha, um, for being part of Virtual Bouquets to Art Week. I appreciate it, and I know our viewers at home who are missing Bouquets to Art dearly this year really appreciate it. So we'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you. Bye.